Hi there, I'm Hyperfreeze Games. You might think 3D modeling software like Blockbench only really benefits you as a game developer, for example, if you actually use a 3D game engine like Godot or the 3D aspect of a game engine or like Unity or Unreal. Um, but not so much if you use only the 2D functionality for Godot, for example, or if you're using um, Game Maker Studio, which has very limited 3D capabilities. But you would be mistaken. In this entry of my low poly modeling block bench series here on YouTube, I will show you how you can utilize block bench to creating 2D sprite sheets for your 2D games in, for example, Game Maker. To function as a fictional protagonist for our non existing game, I wanted to create this little mushroom knight. Um, so while I start here in the background creating him out of um, cylinders, um, let me explain to you why using a 3D uh, modeling software for 2D sprite sheets is actually really beneficial to your project. I myself have dabbled in 2D sprite animation for the longest time of my game dev um, career, <laughs> if you want to call it that. So I started out, um, like so many other devs, just um, creating um, amateur 2D platformers and stuff like that. And one thing that's extremely, extremely difficult, at least, at least for me, uh, but I know for a lot of people too, is 2D animation. Drawing any animation frame by frame is really hard work. And to make it look good and polished is even harder because there's so much potential for janky looking movement, um, textures or like objects or details that don't match um, from frame to frame. So a lot of times you will see that 2D sprite animations tend to play it safe, sort of. Um, there's not much um, like rotation in the sprites because this is so difficult doing um, perspective-wise. There's uh, yeah, just these safe, um, predictable movements which can make a game look um, kind of bland in my opinion. Uh, and I'm not bashing other games, I'm talking about my own prototypes I'm producing over here. One tool to mitigate this a bit um, are these 2D skeletal animation tools like Spine2D, which I used quite a fair bit, um, which give your 2D sprites this skeleton like you would give a 3D object for a 3D animation and you have to just rotate and scale the bones and um, the actual sprite will follow suit. But even then, uh, rotating a character or rotating his weapon or slashing like um, around the camera, so to speak, are really, really hard to pull off and often um, require a mix of the skeletal animation and a sprite, like a frame-by-frame -frame animation for, um, for the turning part. And that's why for me, 3D animations, as hard as they are to, to create themselves, um, are so much more um, convenient to work with because you can just move everything in a 3D space, rotate every limb, every weapon, um, and every character's face to face the camera um, pretty easily. So in Blockbench I have now created this fairly simple 3D character of a Mushroom Knight. So I'm now in the process of creating a run animation, really simple animation. And I won't go overboard here, um, I just want to give you the general gist of how this whole workflow works. So after creating basic movement for the legs, or rather the feet, and the hands, and the sword, I added this bounciness to him, and now this running animation looks fine already. What you now want to do is export the animation um, via the export GIF button. 
You can set the duration to the duration of the looping animation, so you'll have one loop. And then set the pixel dimensions to whatever suits your game best. I'm going for 500 by 500 here. One of the most important steps now, if you want consistency, is you can save this angle um, via this button on the right. Um, so you will make sure to have the same, the same field of view, the same perspective for all the different sprites you export. As the export format, you want to change it from GIF to a PNG sequence, which will spit out something like this. According to your chosen frames per second, you will now have all these different poses, all these different steps or like frames of the animation as single PNG images in the same format. To show you how it works in Game Maker, for example, um, you simply create a sprite now, um, open the sprite editor and import the images, like all these single images, into this sprite. After resizing the initial canvas, your sprite animation is ready to rock uh, inside Game Maker. As you can see, the animation looks butter smooth and you wouldn't be able to tell right away that it is only a 2D sequence and not an actual 3D animation that is displayed. Now all you have to do is set the collision mask um, and the character is ready to be used in game. But such a running animation is quite simple to pull off and can be achieved by just using a 2D sprite um, animator like Spine2D. But to really show you what benefits you can get um, from using Blockbench for your 2D animations, um, I created two more um, small animations, one for jumping, one for falling, which really utilize the 3D aspect of the animation tool. So for this I reposed his limbs and his little mushroom hat and um, just made him spin around his own axis to have him do this little spin jump animation when you're pressing the jump button. And for the falling animation I pretty much did the same thing um, but just repositioned his feet and arms. So after exporting the PNG sequences again I jumped back over to Game Maker duplicated um, the first sprite animation to have the exact same bounding box and just inserted the first the jumping animation and then the falling animation as well. And after hacking together this jump and run functionality in like 15 minutes, um, it really really looks cool. You can run, you can jump, it really shows off the the 3D aspect, the smooth um, rotation of the sprite while jumping. And as a final touch I went back in Blockbench and even modeled this little grass dirt block um, just to show off that you actually could do your whole um, art style, your whole art assets for your game inside Blockbench and export it the way I showed you. All this of course is just a small demonstration of what is possible with using this workflow. Um, you could do in between um, animations for transitioning to a jump or from jumping to falling and so much more. There really are pretty much no limits to this. With that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode and I hopefully see you in the next one. Bye bye!